I'm not convinced it ain't no act in an accident with the track emits. You strap with gas that you ain't even practice with. The fact is, you couldn't hit the... Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. Today, we'll be talking about predictions for WrestleMania 38, parts 1 and 2. So, um, this is being recorded before SmackDown airs. So we don't know what sort of live r- things they will do for WrestleMania. Um, and this ought to be a very fun show. WrestleMania is almost always fun, even if the show isn't great. It's a big night. It's the biggest night of the year as far as wrestling fans are concerned. Um, looking back on it, watching the various WrestleManias, WrestleMania isn't always the best show of the year. I think that some people tend to believe that it is, but it isn't. WrestleMania ha- is trying to do a lot of different things when it comes to the actual event itself. It's supposed to be a pop culture sort of explosion. So there's going to be celebrities and there's going to be musical performances. And it's going to be for some people who are the, the purest of the purest wrestling fans. It's not going to be the best show. In fact, it's going to be one of the worst because it's going to feature a lot of people that they don't care about. And WWE is going to book things in a way that there's a lot of unnecessary tag matches and stuff like that. So that's kind of how the card is put together. But if you look at WrestleMania in general, from top to bottom, from WrestleMania 1 to WrestleMania 37, this card is as strong a card as most WrestleManias tend to be. You know, uh, WrestleMania usually has a bunch of matches that nobody cares about on the show as filler between some of the bigger matches. So this card is pretty average for a WrestleMania card. Um, it's always going to be about how it turns out in terms of the matches, in terms of quality of the matches. So let's start with night one, which ought to be, you know, mostly filler. Now let's get to here the match one, New Day, Kingston and Woods versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. Remember I said that there's probably a lot of useless tag team matches and stuff like that. They could have done this match on SmackDown. Absolutely could have done this match on SmackDown. Probably will do this match on SmackDown. Um, I truly believe that the New Day will win. Uh, Big E will probably make an appearance. He might not get touched. He might not do anything. But I do believe that Big E will probably be present. And will probably make a, some type of an, an impact on this show. Um, even though he did break his neck. Alright. The second match. Happy Corbin versus Drew McIntyre. Uh, this match is an absolute abortion. Everybody hates this feud. Nobody's excited for this match whatsoever. This is the uh, <laughs> this is the part of the show where you know everybody's going to be kind of down. Now they might jazz this up by making it false count anywhere or no disqualification. If I were booking the show, that's how I would do it. The match itself, you've already got the story there. But you gotta just do the, do it, take it to the next level. Make the match no false count anywhere. Make the match no disqualifications. So that at least people can have fun watching guys get hit with chairs. This is the Bradshaw and Finley match on the show. This is the uh, Randy Savage and Crush match on the show. Where it's kind of like, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, I know that guy. I don't really want to watch them wrestle though. You know, I would rather each one of them be doing something else. It's kind of like that. Um, anyway, Drew McIntyre is going to win. He's not going to lose to Happy Corbin. Uh, Corbin has been in WWE since 2015. He's been on the main roster or something like that. The only thing that he has ever won, outside of a very short run as a United States champion and being having a failed Money in the Bank cash in, was the was the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. That's his that's his list of success stories. Oh yeah, he won the King of the Ring too. So he's got an odd list of success stories that doesn't in- involve championships. So he's not going to beat a former world champion in Drew McIntyre. He's more than likely going to just do the job here. So there that goes. Uh, Seth Rollins versus to be announced by Mr. McMahon. Now a lot of people within the last couple of days have changed their mind that it will no longer be Cody. But now it will be Shane McMahon, the best in the world himself. I love that Shane McMahon is such a valued talent that he only comes to work at WrestleMania and he only works with top guys, with the exception of Braun Strowman, of course. Um, Ever since he really returned in 2016, every Shane McMahon match has been a main event, essentially. A uh, match that had story going into it where what took place mattered. And it was actually a pretty good match. Shane doesn't really 
you know, dropped the ball when it comes to matches at WrestleMania. He's actually, outside of the Braun Strowman match, his record is pretty good in terms of his performances at WrestleMania. Uh, do, does that mean that I want Shane McMahon to be the opponent for Seth Rollins? The answer to that question is new. I want it to be Cody just like everybody else because I think it would be fun. There's something fun about, you know, big returns happening at WrestleMania. It was fun when the Hardy Boys did it. It could be fun here too. Now, I'm a story guy, not exactly a match guy. What are you going to do once the once we know the opponent who it is? What kind of match do they have? Do they have an Undertaker John Cena type of match where one person pretty much eats the other one up, and you know there's very little offense given to to Co- to Seth Rollins rather? That's the kind of idea you are into with a Cody Seth Rollins match. You want to establish Cody for people who haven't seen him before. And if you give him 15 to 20 minutes and he and he loses, then, you know, you're kind of like, huh. So I guess we're already telling the story that Seth Rollins is going to go into WrestleMania and lose. But he won't care because he at least he be on the card. So I want it to be Cody because I think it will be a fun way to, for him to return. It'll be a fun way to return talent to bring it back a big name for WrestleMania. And it's what people are expecting. At least meet people's expectations if you can't exceed them. Uh, as far as exceeding expectations, I don't know how you, who would exceed expectations. You know, if it's Gable Steveson or somebody like that, it's going to be below expectations. People are going to groan and be like, ugh, what the hell? You know, why? Like, Gable Steveson already skipping NXT. Now he's going to skip and make his wrestling debut at WrestleMania? Like, hmm. You're kind of begging for the guy to get booed out of the building at that point. And I've seen people say, oh, it could be Brian Breaker. And that would be okay. But again, there's no story there. I think that we should just tell the story that is has been told on the internet. Just give the internet what they want. Let them have this match. You're not going to give them the entire card. Give them this match. You know, let it be Cody. And Cody goes over. And then we actually go into actually doing stories with Cody, which is the important thing here. Not that his name is on the marquee and that his picture and face and tattoo is, you know, now associated with WWE all over again. All right. Uh, Dominic Mysterio, Rey Mysterio versus Miz and Logan Paul. This is our nonsense match of the, uh, of the show, of course. Um, the Mysterios are going to win this match for obvious reasons. The Miz always loses. Uh, the Miz is another guy who is always factored in at WrestleMania. I've been going back watching the WrestleManias and the Miz has been in featured contests more often than not, especially since WrestleMania 27. The Miz is usually in a featured match. Either he has a storyline going in or it's, uh, a, uh, semi main event match where, you know, like the mixed tag thing with him and Maurice versus John Cena and Nikki Bella. That was fun. You know, it was better than I expected it to be actually on a rewatch rather. And I had no interest in seeing it, but it was better than I expected it to be. Um, his false count anywhere match with Shane McMahon, you know, so the Miz is a guy who's always going to be involved, but that doesn't mean the Miz is always going to win. And because the Miz is usually a heel, he doesn't have to win. This is all about making the heels look silly. And Miz is great at that. So I expect the Mysterios to win, you know, um, I don't expect any chicanery about the Mysterios breaking up or doing anything like that. I don't think tonight or WrestleMania, I should say, is the night where you start shooting angles. That's going to spin out of WrestleMania. I think that, you know, what you do at WrestleMania is the, is the culmination of the story. And then maybe on Raw, you continue the story. So I expect the Mysterios to win. Uh, the Usos will defend against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. I fully expect Nakamura and Boogs to win the tag team championships. Reasons because the Usos have been tag team champions for a long time. And WWE isn't necessarily pushing Nakamura. They are pushing Boogs, however. And Boogs needs to have something. And I think that him winning a tag team title at WrestleMania over the Usos is a big moment. And they'll probably use Nakamura as the babyface in peril when he gets beat up. Most of the time, and then they tag in Boogs, who does his big power spots, and he's the one who ends up winning the match. Now, it doesn't really hurt the Usos. They've been the tag team champions going into, like, the last eight WrestleManias or something like that. You know, there's very rarely a tag team championship match that doesn't feature New Day or the Usos. So, they're not going to be harmed in any way in this. But I think WWE sees something in Boogs, and they're trying to push him upon the public. So, there that goes. Uh... 
Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. This match has this has been an absolute abortion. Now, of course, there's been a lot of debate, a lot of banter about whether this or Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair will actually main event the show. Uh, Becky Lynch took some shots at Charlotte and Ronda Rousey by saying that she doesn't care whether Charlotte and Ronda Rousey go on last because her match will be better. Her stories have been better. And she was, you know, she won the main event of WrestleMania and Bianca Belair won the main event of WrestleMania. And it would make more sense to have the two women who won the WrestleMania main events to wrestle in the main event rather than uh, banking on Ronda Rousey's name. And she's absolutely correct. You know, it makes no sense for Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair to even have a match, let alone for them to be feuding against each other. Uh, I I know this is what they've been inking towards since WrestleMania 34. This has been four years in the making. You know, people don't understand that, that WWE had wanted Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey since WrestleMania 34. When Charlotte beat Oscar, the point of Charlotte beating Oscar was because WrestleMania 35 was supposed to be Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey. But Becky Lynch broke that up and ended up in the main event of that show. And then, of course, 36, there was no Ronda. <laughs> 37, there was no Ronda. So we're here with 38. Now we're stuck with this match. And they're not telling the story that this match is four years in the making. This is what you know everybody was looking forward to the whole time. Uh, and the performances of these ladies have not been very good. Again, Charlotte performs mostly when she's not feeling it, she goes down to her opponent's level and she has definitely gone down to the Ronda Rousey level because Ronda doesn't give a shit. Ronda Rousey has all of the personality of a dry sponge. She's terrible. And looking back after going through the WrestleMania, she was never really all that good. It was all about, Hey, this is Ronda Rousey. Isn't this special? This is going to be great. You know, it feels like a one-off when they do the mixed tag match with her and uh, Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie. It felt like a one-off. Like, okay, you know, we got to put somebody in there to, that can destroy Stephanie. And Stephanie is going to, you know, get her comeuppance, finally. And then WrestleMania 35, we're going to do the similar thing, but with Charlotte. Where Charlotte's going to be a dominant. She can't be stopped. She's She's got the super ego. And then she runs into the Ronda Rousey train and she gets stopped. But Ronda on t this now is not good. It ain't good, and I don't care. Uh, I don't care who wins. But I, of course, expect Ronda Rousey to win. And I think the fact that it's so damn predictable makes it one of the things that we should just put it on first. <laughs> you know, like, I would be great if Charlotte and Ronda go on first. I would love that. Because it's so predictable and everybody knows Ronda is going to win. And the performances have not been on the appropriate level. Just go ahead and let Ronda go out there first and win. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship. It's on the same night. Uh, obviously, Bianca Belair is going to win this match. This match could also go first. You know, uh, because again, it's very predictable. I expect Bianca Belair to win. Uh, this has been a great story. And they've been telling it since August. It has had, you know, two of the biggest stars in the female division as far as uh, actually being over, getting great reactions. So these two will be fine. Uh, I don't see a problem. I think the match would probably be the best match on the show outside of the what should be the main event in any real sense, Edge versus AJ Styles. Now, I don't know if this card is correct because I saw before that Edge versus AJ Styles would actually be on the Sunday show. I don't know if it's going to be on the Saturday show or the Sunday show. I guess I won't know actually what the actual card will be until I sit down and watch it. Because this is the problem with having two night WrestleManias. It's like, is this going to be on Saturday? Is it going to be on Sunday? For most everything except Brock and Roman, I have no idea what night it's going to be on. You know, except for Charlotte and Ronda, which they say is the main event of the Saturday night. Which is, you know, confusion. But let's put it here because this is how ESPN has it. ESPN has Edge versus AJ Styles on Saturday. So let's do it on the Saturday predictions. Obviously, I think Edge will win the match, but I think this will probably be the match of the night. I think it'll be the match of the night regardless what match it, what night it's on. Because I don't see anything on the Saturday show that's going to rival it. And I certainly don't see you know, anything on the Sunday show, as far as work rate is concerned, that will rival Edge versus AJ Styles. I think that if they give them the right time and they get the right story, these two will destroy WrestleMania weekend. And it will be fantastic from a work rate perspective. 
Um, and I fully expect Edge to win uh, because he's he's debuting a new character. He's setting a new standard for himself. And they're not really doing that with AJ Styles. And if they were, I would probably say AJ would have a better chance of winning. So that would be uh, nice regardless. But it's all, it'll all be a very good match. So the the another reported WrestleMania uh, Saturday main event is the KO show with Kevin Owens welcoming Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, you have to understand when WWE uses the word main event, they don't necessarily mean show closer. Uh, Vince has always been one of those. It's the main event. It's uh, there's multiple main events for WrestleMania. There's three or four main events for WrestleMania. You know, half the card is the main event for as far as Vince is concerned. So for him, he may see this as being a WrestleMania main event. But it's actually just, you know, a pretty large scale segment because we know the main event is the show closer. You know, it's not like, you know, we're going to have the first match is the main event and everything else is dark. <laughs> it makes no sense. So um, this ought to be pretty big. Of course, there's no real reason to, you know, what, what do you, you know, predict from the KO show other than stunners, you know, Kevin Owens being covered in beer and where it will be on the card. I think this will probably be in the middle of the card. Uh, and yeah, it'll be, it'll probably be followed by something nobody cares about. So this will be a, probably be a lengthy segment. I'll say about 20 minutes. They'll spend 15 of it fighting, hopefully. And you know, it'll be, it'll be over. And then, Beer will be everywhere and everybody will be happy and everybody will be ecstatic. And then it's time to bring everybody down. And that's likely where you would drop your Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin match or your Mysterios versus The Miz and Logan Paul match. You know, if it doesn't go on last, you know, which it very well could, but I wouldn't finish WrestleMania with Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. That's just me personally. It's not a match. I wouldn't, you know, end the show with a non match. That's just me, though. All right, WrestleMania Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. All right, so according to ESPN, Bobby Lashley versus Amos will be taking place on Sunday. Now, uh, for most people, they see this as Amos winning and maintaining his momentum. Uh, other people see Bobby Lashley winning. I think that it's great either way, uh, mainly because this won't be long. I don't expect this match to be 15 minutes of wasting everybody's time. This will be decided within six minutes. And if the six minutes of hard hitting, uh, big meaty men smacking meat, I'm all about it. Even if Bob loses. And when I, I expect Lashley to lose. Uh, now I, I've said previously, especially in this video, that I don't really, you know, enjoy the concept of we're going to shoot angles in the middle of the show. But this is the one time where I would say probably you should shoot an angle. And that is MVP turning on Lashley. To join Amos. I think that's what we should be doing here. That should be the one angle that we really shoot on this show. We don't don't need any unnecessary heel turns and that kind of stuff. Save that stuff for Monday. This show should be to establish characters and establish storylines. And, you know, in those storylines, rather. And if this is going to be the end of the Hurt Business, MVP needs to turn on Lashley. So Lashley can go on his own. And Amos can have MVP. And then you kind of end the Hurt Business storyline, which began last year, of MVP, Lashley, you know, coming together. You can separate them, have put MVP with Amos, and now MVP and Amos can go on into the future. I think that's what we do. And I think that's the way you protect Bobby Lashley in a loss, is not only is he coming off an injury, but then you have MVP, say, hit him with his cane in the arm or something like that, and give Amos the win. Uh, Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Clearly, I believe that Sami Zayn will win this match. Um, this match is anything goes. It's not listed on ESPN as anything goes, but this match is anything goes. Um, Johnny Knoxville has already kind of spoiled that, uh, this will be a jackass fest. That it will probably be a bunch of the jackass guys out there. Horrible things happening to them with, you know, hopefully WrestleMania goes full, full stupid. And we start stapling things to these guys' foreheads and stapling their scrotums together and all that kind of shit. Because why not? Nobody cares about these guys. You know, they're out there to get fucked up. So let's do it. Let's treat them like crash test dummies. They're not wrestlers. If they were wrestlers, I would say, why would you do this? Because you got to come on TV next week. But they're not wrestlers. So you can go ahead and throw them off the Titan Tron if you want to. I don't give a shit. 
you know, uh, do whatever you want to these guys because they're not coming back. So um, I fully expect Sami Zayn to win, though, because Johnny Knoxville isn't going to be a physical threat. Uh, the next match, Austin Theory versus Pat McAfee. Uh, I, I know I've been pretty negative on the celebrity matches, and Pat McAfee has had two matches total his entire WWE career. And now he's going to get his own special WrestleMania match. And I'm not thrilled with this. Uh, I've been, I like Pat McAfee. I think that he's great. I like Austin Theory. It's just, I don't see why they are wrestling each other. And then there's no heat for this. You know, they've been trying to make heat for it with Austin Theory being very annoying and Pat McAfee having to deal with this man child who keeps picking with him. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, can we do this on some other show? Like, can we, can we have done this in Saudi Arabia or somebody's done this for the Royal Rumble or something like that? Why do we have to do this at WrestleMania? You know, I feel like we already got too much in the way of celebrity involvement and shit like that. And I really don't care for it, but, uh, it will happen. And since it will happen, I am kind of tossed on who should win. Pat McAfee probably doesn't need to win because he's not going to be a regular wrestler. Austin Theory is. Austin Theory is the guy that you've had beat Ricochet. You've had him beat Finn Balor. You had him beat Intercontinental Champions, World Champions. Why break his momentum by having him lose to Pat McAfee? So I would go with Austin Theory. Even though I know that WWE does not think the way that, you know, traditional wrestling companies think. And what I'm saying is traditional wrestling stuff. You build momentum and you keep it going. I could see Vince picking Pat McAfee to give Austin Theory his comeuppance and, you know, embarrass him in front of the world. But I think you should show off Austin Theory. Show off that he's going to be one of your guys who might be in the main event in future WrestleManias. There's no reason for him to lose here. No, I don't know. The Raw Tag Team Championships, Riddle and Orton, RK Bro versus the Street Profits versus the Alpha Academy. Uh, this is going to be fun. And I fully expect Riddle and Orton to win. Um, I think we what we're looking for here is what kind of special RKO will they do? And I'm thinking they may try to do the Moonsault RKO again. Um, just so they can get it on the WrestleMania highlights. Rather than uh, doing it in terms of, hey, they did it on Raw. So they're just going to do it again. Most, I think a lot of people will watch this show that probably did not watch Raw. And their first time seeing it will likely be on this show. And it will be the finish. You know, so I think they're going to go with the Moonsault RKO thing again as a finish. So we're going to go with RK, bro. The Women's Tag Team Championships. Carmella and Zelina Vega versus Naomi and Sasha Banks versus Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley versus Natalia and Shayna Baszler. If I were booking this show, I'd throw some ladders in there. Because who get? I don't care if they get hurt. And this match needs it. This match literally needs something. <laughs> you know, it needs some color. Uh, because just having these eight women, eight, is it, yeah, eight women wrestle, I'm not so sure anybody cares. You know, um, now looking at this card, looking at the Sunday card as, as it's put together by ESPN, it would make sense for them to put AJ and Edge on this show because this show's kind of, this show's kind of weak. Um, I'm looking at it. Yeah, Edge and AJ Styles probably would fit better on the Sunday show because outside of Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, this is a weak card. So I could see them moving Edge and AJ to Sunday. Uh, so the the winners, if I were booking it, I would probably give the belts to Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley as I think they have the best chemistry as a tag team of these teams that are remaining. Uh, Sasha Banks doesn't need to win a tag team championship. Naomi is just there because, you know, She's gotten really over in the last couple of weeks with her storyline with Sonya Deville. Uh, Carmella and Zelina Vega, they are kind of done as a tag team. I don't know. And Natalia is Natalia. For fuck's sake, it's Natalia. You know, this is... And I, I want to say this because I think this is necessary. And I was going to save it for later. I'm going to say it now. There is no hide or hair or hint of a women's battle royal at WrestleMania this year. And it seems like there is no hint at a women's battle royal because... They're going to do this match. I would f feel much better if they just took all of these people and put them in a battle royal and have it be number one contender and maybe even put it on the day before, you know, and we have the separate the women's championship matches and put them on different nights. I am 
absolutely uninterested in this women's tag team championship thing. Um, and <laughs> I know Rhea Ripley should be a star on her own. She doesn't need a tag team partner. But Liv Morgan is really over, and her work with uh, Becky Lynch has really elevated her stock. And you got to give her something, you know. And she's the one person out of this whole thing that kind of needs something to keep her fans happy, even though they're kind of idiotic. You know, the Liv Morgan fans are a wretched bunch. But it makes sense that if you wanted to, you know, WrestleMania is going to be about moments and goodwill. Given Liv Morgan her first championship at WrestleMania um, in a tag team, it's perfectly fine. And I think that's okay. And it doesn't have to last forever. You know, she could be tag team champions for a couple of weeks. And then, you know, hey, Nikki Bella was engaged for a little while. That was a WrestleMania moment, wasn't it? Nikki Bella was engaged for a little while. <laughs> and then <laughs> the wedding never happened. So you can give Liv Morgan these somewhat worthless tag team championships as a big moment for her fan base. And then we could just say, oh, she lost them um, two, three weeks later to somebody else. And I don't know who. I have no idea who. <laughs> but uh, I can see them wanting to give Liv Morgan a moment. So let's go ahead with uh, Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley being the winners. And the main event of the entire shindig, uh, the, the big dog, the head of the table, Roman Reigns versus Cowboy Beast Brock Lesnar. In a winner take all unification match for the W versus the WWE champion versus the Universal Championship. Clearly, I truly believe that Roman Reigns will win this match. Um, some people have said, Oh, Roman Reigns being in all these WrestleMania main events mean that they can't make new stars. It's like, well, no, he's on a Hogan run, he's on a Cena run. When these guys are, when you, when a guy gets on a run like that, he gets multiple main events. And he just does. You know, the idea that we're going to change main eventers every, every year, WWE doesn't, doesn't do that. You know, you keep milking that cow until the, the milk dries up. And the Roman Reigns milk is not dry. You know, it, it ain't. It's still going good. But I don't think that we'll be seeing much more of Brock Lesnar this year. I think this is, you know, um, little known to everybody. He considered himself retired after WrestleMania 36 and he dropped the belt to uh, Drew McIntyre. And he kind of figured he was done and that he wasn't going to come back. And I most think most people thought that it was going to be Drew and Roman at WrestleMania, either last year at 37 or this year at 38. Neither one of those things occurred, which means we're probably looking at it at 39. Uh, I'm going to keep saying it until it actually happens because I think that that is where they're going. That's why Drew and Roman are on the same show. Uh, or it may not even make it to WrestleMania, to be quite honest. So, I do believe that Roman will win. Uh, because I think Brock Lesnar has been in such a good mood. And everything's been going so well. And it's not time for the head of the table character to get his comeuppance yet. Now, um, a lot of people have noticed that whenever Roman's done with one big story, the next one starts almost immediately. So there's a lot of people suggesting that Roman is going to win, hold up both belts, and then hit your smell is going to happen, and The Rock is going to come in the ring, and The Rock and Roman Reigns are going to stare at each other, and then WrestleMania 39, The Rock versus Roman Reigns. And to be quite honest, it's a fantasy booking situation, and I'm all for it. If it happens, I think that would be great. It would be awesome for Roman. It'll be a hell of a moment. It'll send the crowd home exceedingly happy knowing that there will be a Rock Roman match. And it's not just something that's been whispered, um, whispered about. And you can get people building up that anticipation. And anticipation is very, very, very underrated. And WWE doesn't do it enough. You know, they don't do enough of the, you know, this is coming. You know, this is coming. Boom, it comes. And then everybody's just like, oh, I can't wait. Getting anxious. Now, having it being set a year apart like Rock and Cena was, uh, I don't know if Roman is on that level yet where we can tell that entire year-long story. But since you've had two years of Roman Reigns being the head of the table already, you might be able to get away with it. So that's going to be my prediction. My prediction is that The Rock will date, uh, come back at WrestleMania to do a stare down with Roman. And how I would do it is... I would do it similar to Roy Rumble 2005. And that would be the story that I would tell. Is I, you know, Rock would come down there. The crowd would be standing up. They'd stare at each other. Maybe Roman would smile and, and nod and then offer his hand. 
to The Rock. Like, lift my arm like you did in 2015. Lift my arm. Acknowledge me. And then The Rock would be like, nope. And then step right into his face. You know, and kind of leave us with that with that moment of Roman being dismayed that The Rock would challenge him. So this is one time where I think that the dirt sheets and the blue check marks actually have a great idea. You know, when Roman got done with... You know, um, I forget who he was wrestling when John Cena, Edge, it was Edge. After he beat Edge, Cena appeared. So, you know, then we, that set us up for SummerSlam. Then after he got done with Cena, Brock appeared. So now it's time to take it to the next level. You know, the, the final level, which is got to be somebody from the Attitude Era. It's got to be The Rock. Now, could it be Stone Cold Steve Austin? So Austin's going to be back the next night anyway. It's like, mm, we don't need, we got Austin on Saturday. We're not really going to need Austin on Sunday. I haven't heard hide or hair of the rock. And I think that it, you, you do want to sort of move Brock Lesnar out of the way and let him go on his sabbatical. Cause it's, it's over time for him to go on sabbatical. And I do believe that the rock will probably be a great opponent. Now, of course you don't want to, do you want to set up an opponent like the rock and knowing that now Roman has to carry the belt for an entire year, you know, another year. Shitting on every opponent he's going to have up to that point because they know that you're not going to fuck up your money and having Roman lose to Big E on, you know, <laughs> day one or, uh, what was it? TLC that's going to be in Saudi Arabia or some shit. It's like, nah, man, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. So I can see them trying it, you know, um, trying to get away with it that way, but I'm going to go with Roman Reigns wins and we might have a return after the show. Will it be The Rock? I don't know. Will it be, you know, Bray Wyatt? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Will, will Cody appear after, uh, you know, like, like Cena, like Brock, Cody? You know, you know, and, uh, Cody is the one who makes his grand appearance. At WrestleMania 30, 38, but it's not in a match against Seth Rollins, but instead a stare down with Roman Reigns as he makes his re-debut. Uh, that would actually be a nice little spot. You know, that would be a nice little spot. He's not a bigger star than Brock, but it'd be a bigger surprise. It'd be a huge surprise, but I'm not, I'm gonna go with The Rock just because I like being stupid sometimes. I like having fun sometimes, man. It's stupid fun to do this. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What do you guys think of WrestleMania, the card, and everything? Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.